Welcome to our service this morning um, for the um, service from St. Chad's. This is Trinity Sunday, uh, when we really express the wonder and the thankfulness of God's uh, creation um, through the work of the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So we're having, please follow um, the, the script, and if you like to join in at home with saying all the, um, the text that is in bold, uh, that would be great. Um, o Lord, open our lips. And, and our mouth shall should proclaim your praise. Bless the Lord, all ye works of the Lord. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. Bless the Lord, you heavens. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. Bless the Lord, you angels of the Lord. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. Bless the Lord, all people on earth. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. O people of God, bless the Lord. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. Bless the Lord, you priests of the Lord. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. Bless the Lord, you servants of the Lord. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. Bless the Lord, O all you of upright spirit. Bless the Lord, you that are hum holy and humble in heart. Bless the Father, the, Father, the, Son, the Son, and, and the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Sing his praise and, and exalt him forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now we have Psalm 8, um, and we'll read the refrain. All nations you have made shall come and worship you, O Lord. O Lord, our governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. Your majesty above the heavens is praised. Out of the mouths of babes are the, at the breast. You have founded a stronghold against your foes. That you might still the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have ordained, what is man that you should be mindful of him, the son of man that you should seek him out? You have made him little lower than the angels and crown him with glory and honour. You have given him dominion over the works of your hands and put all things under his feet. All sheep and oxen, even the beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever moves in the paths of the sea. O Lord, our governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. All nations you have made shall come and worship you, O Lord. And now the prayer. God of mercy, who in your great love drew your son from the depths of the pit, Bring your people from death to life, that we may rejoice in your compassion and praise you now and forever.
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, and shall be for ever. Amen. Of Paul to the church in Corinth. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order, listen to my appeal, agree with one another, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. We're going to say the canticle now. Please join in with all the verses if you like. You sent forth your spirit, O God, and you continue to show mercy to all. I will sing a new song to my God. For you are great and glorious, truly strong and invincible. May your whole creation serve you, for you spoke and all things came to be. You sent forth your spirit and they were formed, for no one can resist your voice. Mountains and seas are stirred to their depths and your presence, rocks, shall melt like wax. But for those who love you, you continue to show mercy. No sacrifice, however fragrant, can please you, but whoever fears the Lord shall stand in your sight forever. All glory to the Father and the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. You send forth your Spirit, O God, and you continue to show mercy to all. Now a reading from the Gospel. St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 28 beginning at verse 16. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give you light. You have died, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead. Set your minds on things that are above, not on the things that are on the earth. And Christ shall give you light. When Christ, our life, appears, you will appear with him in glory. Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. May I speak in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I guess no day is more apt to say, may I speak in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, than uh, Trinity Sunday. 
time, uh, lots of people, lots of priests um, are fearful of this day. They feel like they're going to have to preach on a great doctrine that no one um, understands fully and completely because God is not knowable in that way um, in one sense. But I really like the words that my colleague, um, uh, the Reverend Dr. Kara Slade shared yesterday on Facebook. And Facebook is not good for all things, but it is sometimes good um, when one has friends who are wise and discerning and think about these sorts of things for a living. Um, it's good to hear what they're thinking about. And what Dr. Slade says is, this is your yearly reminder that the doctrine of the Trinity is not an abstraction. It is good news that tells us that nothing is beyond God's power to save us in Christ. That when we say God, we mean the triune God in all God's particularity, who has always been God for us, and not a vague and possibly disinterested supreme being. That God is a God whose last word is yes. That when we see Jesus heal, forgive, and give his life for us, we see the true revelation of who God is and what God does. And then she writes a little jokingly, this has been a public service announcement from your cheerful Bartian friend, because she's a scholar who studies called Bart, and um, she's an Episcopal priest, a, an Anglican priest, um, but she's, her, her gifts um, and skills and theology are, are incredible. But what I want to say about that is I think that this is actually uh, the direction we need to go in today. I feel like I could talk to you uh, a great deal about formularies and about different ways that people talk about the Trinity. It's like a clover. It's like an orange. It's like the sun. I mean, yes, all those things are great analogies. But the heart of the reason why we talk about the Trinity specifically at least once every year, but hopefully all the time, is it's important to talk about God for God's sake, not only for our sake, and that in doing so, something incredible is revealed. That God exists um, without anything that we do and anything that we would want to do, that God exists and yet God's desire, some deep part of the fullness of who God is, is bringing us in. It reminds me of, and lots of things remind me of children, but it reminds me of how when you're a child, your, your parent, you, you think, if you, if you have loving parents, and not everyone does, but if you do, you sort of have the feeling that their whole purpose in life is to just like serve you. And you can, you can see how children feel this way, like parents don't exist, except for when they're in the room with you. I remember when I was in um, elementary school, I thought that the teacher lived in the supply closet. Now, this is, it's just weirder because my mom is a teacher, so clearly I knew teachers go to houses, but I literally thought when we left that she would open the door to the supply closet and sort of stay in there like a mummy and then sort of appear again at 7.15 and make everything tidy for us. Because I think that, that reveals the, the mindset of a child that like, you're a teacher and I can't understand that you have a family or be a person or have feelings. You exist to, to um, to, so to love and serve us in this classroom. And that's a sort of a five-year-old understanding of life. But I fear that sometimes we have that view about God too. We, we sort of don't, we can't imagine or we're scared to think that if we could imagine God having anything else going on, that it would mean God didn't love us or God didn't want us. But nothing could be further from the truth. In reality, the, the, the triune nature of God reveals that God enjoys being with others. So much so that before there were any others to be, God was three. And in a wonderful sense, I think what we see in Jesus and in the Holy Spirit is that God isn't just content to know us or to hang out with us a little bit. God wants us front and center with God in the making of things, in the creation of things, in the loving of things. When you think about the gifts of the Holy Spirit, it's God giving a part of God's self to us. From the very beginning, God wanted us to see and know that I don't just love you. I want you to have a part of me in you. I want you to want to be like me in the very best sense, but also very aware that there are things that are not possible for you. And that's a really hard balance. When I look at what's happening in the world today, there are lots of things to talk about, the injustices, the horrors, um, the disappointments and sadness, I think many people feel, including me, about the ways that 
um, we as human beings can oppress and, uh, and oppress and restrict one another in death dealing um, harmful, evil ways. And at the same time, the reason why they're so harmful and so awful is because of the imprint of God within us, that a peace of God resides in every single human being. That is what it means to be made in the image of God. The God of love and relationship is yearning so much for us to have that kind of unity. And when God pours God's spirit out on us, we receive the gifts that are God's gifts, love and joy and peace and patience, and kindness, and goodness, and all those things. And so when we do other things, things that are the direct opposite of those things, we are not only harming one another, we are, we are blaspheming against God. We are saying a thing that is untrue about who God has made us to be, particularly when we do that in the name of the faith that is the triune God's love and light. So I want to invite us to not just reflect on the events of our lives or the events in the big screen of the world in terms of what's, what's good or what's nice and what's not very nice, but in terms of who God made each and every one of us to be because of who God is and the lengths God has gone to to create a world in which we can participate in this divine life. That is literally what we're doing when we have communion. That is actually what was happening when we're baptized. We are joining into the divine life. And that life is good and loving, and we have received that to give it to others. And perhaps if we go about doing our father's business, if we go about doing our brother Jesus, our savior Jesus's business, our friend, the beloved Holy Spirit's business, we will not only help ourselves, but in that participation, we're experiencing something more than we would ever imagine. And I don't know about you, but in a time in which there is very little to hope for, the extraordinarily abundant, amazing love of God is something that fills me with hope. Because really, it is only God that can direct our steps, that can guide our feet into the way of peace, and that can ensure justice for all. So let us take our seat at the divine table. Let us participate in the glorious love that has been extended to us. Let us never forget that each of us is created in the image and the likeness of that very God. Thanks be to God. As we reflect on that wonderful image of God wanting to be part of us and wanting us to be part of him, so we sum up those thoughts as we say the creed together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and was made man. And for our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. And on the third day he rose again according, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. 
We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. And now we offer our prayers to God. We ask the prayers for God's people throughout the world, particularly for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, John, Archbishop of York, Michael, our diocesan bishop, and Sarah, our area bishop, and all ministers and people. We pray for all the church throughout the world, especially for each other and for the congregations of St. Chad's and St. Orkman's. We pray for peace, for goodwill among nations. Pray for Sovereign Lady Queen Elizabeth, for our Prime Minister Boris Johnson and leaders of the opposition and all ministers of parliament, for all who govern and hold authority in this and every land, and especially this time, we pray for racial justice throughout the world. We give thanks for those newly born and their families, especially for baby Naomi Davis and her parents, Rachel and Dennis. For infants, children, parents and guardians and teachers. And for all who are concerned about being in school at the moment. Pray for the poor, the sick and the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison, especially for those imprisoned unjustly. So we pray for the work of amnesty, for any who are in need or trouble. Pray that we might be more generous in all that we do. We pray for those who are working on the front lines of this disease throughout the world remembering especially members of our congregation, Dr. Trevor Hunt, Dr. Susan Kelly, and Dr. Said Hendricks, for all those working with the NHS, chaplains, and other key workers, for all carers in the community, and the care homes in our town. those who collect our rubbish, for those who serve us in the shops. Prayer especially for those who have asked the prayers for the, of this benefice, for Margaret Jones, Pat Trantisi, Chris Cheshire, Catherine, Emma, 
Malcolm Booth, Jessica, Laverne, Maureen, Rachel, Jubilee, Clara, Mikel, for baby Isabella, Casey, Deidre Bean, Haven, Heaven and Casey. I ask for your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that we may know the God of love and creation. Through Father, through Son and Holy Spirit, in the depths of our soul. Pray that others may find, and we too may be found in him, or this trinity of love. Pray for all who have died, for the departed, especially Mary Medins, and for their families. Pray for George Lloyd and his family. Pray for all who have died unjustly. We pray especially for all who've died from COVID-19 and for those they leave to mourn. We pray also for those who are remembered especially this week, for Emily Patrick, Wilfred Chilton, Violet Bate, Ray Williams, and Connie Thrower. So we praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honoured, and pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, the collect for the day. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us your servant's grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal trinity and in the power of the divine majesty to worship the unity keep us steadfast in this faith that we may evermore be defended from all adversities through jesus christ your son our lord who is alive and reigns with you and the holy spirit one God, now and forever. Amen. So will you join with me as we say the Lord's Prayer? Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
Lord, bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.